I didn't think I was going to be doing a video this week, and uh, I've been a little bit busy with some other projects, including uh, the Maelstrom fan controller update. But I wanted to take uh, an opportunity to look at this, and it's kind of interesting in a few ways. So the first thing that jumps out at me is they said, today the axles with the sensors applied to them have been delivered to our office. This means we're a step closer to the testing phase. Okay, and, and you know, to the layman, this, oh yeah, they've, they've, they've got something here. Now, I want to jump to this. Early on, they, they were showing pictures like this, and they had talked about some sort of magical depositing technology for their string gauge stuff. Um, I mean, any basic mechanical engineer who's done anything with string gauges would have been, could have been like, yep, stress rises, this ain't gonna work right here. Um, but, you know, that was back November 3rd, 2018, and it was shortly after that that they found their problems. But they've shown stuff about how they're using some sort of magical technology to deposit strain gauges, and this kind of indicates that they've got something different. But it's still a basic strain gauge in some capacity. The other thing to note is, you know, it says new strain gauge, and I think I've been able to get enough on the picture to find, figure out that this is a regular contraflector design on one side. So, yeah, not sure how well that's going to do a torque. And that center here is still not great. And it does look very much like their design has not dealt with that and that there's a possible shoulder bearing here. So if, if that is the case, if, if some backer actually gets one of these and disassembles it and sees a bearing out here, just... No offense, just throw away the pedal, return it for a refund, get something new. But if it is fully constrained to, to this area over here, eh, not that big a deal, but you're probably gonna see some crazy accelerated bearing wear going on. So what have you got here? Um, they've been delivered to our office. This means we're a step closer. Why, why do they need to outsource the installation of a string gauge? Like, I've got a base mini office lab thing going on, and I can install strain gauge for long-term installations here. It's, you know, it's a few thousand dollars to get set up. But they obviously don't have that capabilities in their facility. The other thing that's really jumping out at me is I took a little sketch. It's, um, this is obviously steel, and you can tell by this discoloration. That discoloration happens whenever you're machining any steel um, and, and it warms up during the machining operation. So we can tell right now it's steel. We can't tell which type. And uh, just to throw, throw out to all the cyclists who don't seem to understand metallurgy, chromoly, 4130, Reynolds 953, all steels have the same nearly exact Young's modulus. The only differences we're talking is their tensile um, their yield strength, sorry, and their ultimate tensile strength. And essentially, more alloying elements, you can usually up those and you trade off to making the material brittle. And there are certain other things you can do to make materials harder and tougher, but um, all steels are essentially going to be the same stiffness. So you doesn't matter what this is, um, most axles are, are chromoly or some variation, some variation of steel, 200 GPA, Young's modulus. But the thing that confuses me is you've got this big, beefy uh, piece back here. That's a terrible arrow. And that obviously doesn't thread into a pedal. So something's threading into the back and that has to do with, this has to be perfectly aligned. I've already shown before in my previous video how that alignment, you know, it's not a big deal for one thing, but it's a bigger deal for another. Um, so like, you know, you twist it one degree. Yeah, you know, it's still like 99.9% .9 of the force you want, but it just gained like two or 3% of the force you didn't want. But that means you're going to have something that goes through your soft aluminum piece and threads into the back of this to kind of act like a jam nut. And that means it could, it could be done in a few ways, but if it's done where it's not threaded into the axle, kind of like some of the original pictures indicate, 
you're going to destroy, absolutely destroy the teeth in, in the threads. Um, the other thing, this contact here, I'm a little concerned about that. So obviously this folds down around the edge, the circuit board's on the opposite side, but shape here goes through here and this goes out and this is a slip ring. Well, you know what? As far as I understand, so very few times have I ever seen a combination of hard gold and, and regular gold plating. So hard gold is needed um, as a, uh, you build up the thickness of gold because it, it's a wear item, but it, it's a good, you know, very good electrical contact. But yeah, it's not great. Um, whenever you have slip rings like this, you'll, you're likely to get disconnects. Uh, they're going to have to do a lot of testing. So what do they need? They need fatigue testing. They need accuracy testing. They need installation user testing. And they need the slip ring tested to the high heavens. I would be aiming at um, bad case scenario, potential water ingress, and uh, 300,000 cycles at full load. Um, and they can do that just by spinning the axle. The other thing, uh, so uh, uh, PCBs, after showing the PCBs in the latest update, we located a hardware issue. This means we have to reorder the PCBs and we're looking at another two to three weeks before they arrive. So it might be because they're, um, I don't know if English is first language here, um, but usually the term PCB means the blank, PCB A, as in PCB assembled or assembly, includes the chips. And they've got a decently small PCB here. Uh, looks like an NRF52 series, that's good. Uh, this looks like potentially an accelerometer or gyro. They've got a tilt sensor, which, yeah, not quite sure what that's about. And based on the fact that these pins run to the far edge over here, this looks like an inductor. This is uh, probably their power regulator, DC to DC. This looks like their analog to digital converter. I have some concerns about that. And a lot of it kind of relates to very few ADCs come in this this MSOP package and the ones that do are not high quality and what I mean by that not high quality it means lower bit rate potentially um, bad reference setups as in they have an internal reference and and they're going to power have to, but they have to power this from an external uh, they've got their standard programming here but where's your antenna guys seriously um, Obviously the antenna is not a PCB antenna. It must be ran out from here somewhere because the pedal's going to block it. And that's perfectly fine, but they don't have the testing, they don't have the ability to install stranges, string gauges internally in their company. They have to outsource that. Um, no company usually has a pick and place in their company. It's a very strange type of thing if they would. But the, the weird thing here is like, how are you going to, you're going to essentially need a fully complete package. You, you ha they're going to have to be um, bod composite body all around with the antenna and everything and put this in a package it and send it out. So they said August, we are at the beginning of June right now. What does that mean? Well, the fastest FCC turnaround I've had with Z when you had zero problems is six, maybe eight weeks. So you have to get a testing house. They have to do the test independently. Uh, you have to prep instructions. Your manual has to be ready and they compile that all and they ship it out. And then you have to wait for approval, which doesn't usually take too long, um, especially with, because the testing house that you're using has to be pre-vetted. They're changing the PCB. We have located a hardware issue. They can't file FCC until they have functional hardware with at least a dummy firmware load. So until they get two to three weeks, so July, and then even if they have FCC, but we haven't seen a, a real pedal body, this hasn't gone through fatigue testing because they just got it. So you're not getting anything before Christmas of this year. 
Um, and with that, uh, thanks for watching this just kind of screen cap video. Hopefully there'll be something next week. And uh, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, be happy to poke holes at things. But uh, right now, I still don't like the design. I don't like how this is going. I don't like the slip rings. I don't like what looks like a really cheap ADC. Um, I do like they've got some really good packaging here, though. Uh, I ditched that tilt sensor. That's a overpriced waste of money. Just uh, put your gyro or your, you know, if you have a gyro or gyro and Excel, um, or just an accelerometer. I don't know which it is. It's too hard. The resolution is too low to see. Uh, just put it in ultra low power mode and then tell your system to wake up off it. These are just like a, a buck fifty expense. And at a three to one, four to one, the waste of money. Um, power stage, yeah, that's sort of fine, but you could also ditch this. This is costing them about a dollar. The reason you can ditch this is um, you're going to add noise to your ADC, which, yeah, you don't want, but the NRF52 series has a built-in D to C to DC power stage if you place the inductors. If you do that, it's actually just as efficient to run that than it is to have an external power stage. The only real losses are in your accelerometer and your ADC running a, a, a little less efficient. But the difference, I've mathed this out several times, the difference is almost negligible. It's like you take the hit on this and you, you get the bump in efficiency on this. Whereas this has to go into linear mode and then it wastes power if you run it at too low of a voltage anyway. So, eh, you, you, you guys look like you've wasted about three bucks there and that's about $10 at the consumer level. And when you're just like penny pinching to try and make something low cost, it's just bad design work. Um, okay, well, hopefully they, they resolve some of this. Uh, it's starting to feel more doubtful that that price point um, is anything but them taking a, a huge loss on money.